I want you to be finding in your Bibles. I didn't know, I told the early service, I didn't know Brother Randy was going to sing that. I had planned to preach from Esther chapter number 4 uh, this week, but uh, the Lord had, had changed direction, and uh, I understood it a little better after the first service, after talking to uh, a couple of people. But Genesis chapter 3, and then I want you to put a finger, which you, you probably won't have to do, uh, put a finger in John 3.16, and then uh, John 14, verses 1 through 3. Genesis 3, 8 and 9. And we'll look at John 3, 16 and John 14, verses 1 through 3. All right, you stand in honor and reverence to the reading of God's inspired, inerrant, infallible Word. I want to speak to you this morning on this subject, three facts about God that will change your life. Three facts about God that will change your life. Beginning in verse number 8 of Genesis chapter number 3. The, uh, Adam and Eve have already partaken of the forbidden fruit. They have sinned against God. They have disobeyed God. And now they are trying to hide from God. Could I say this morning, just, just uh, uh, as a side note, we can't hide from God. We can run as far as we want to. We can get in the deepest crevice that we want to. We can go to the darkest jungle we want to, but we will never escape the presence of Almighty God. The Bible says in verse 8, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Could it be here, here this morning? Could it be that, that uh, you're here and uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty, has gotten you here today and already He's fingering around your heart. Even without our wonderful choir singing, we sung these wonderful hymns. Randy sang an awesome song. And the Holy Spirit of God's already dealing with you. And maybe He's asking you right now. You've been trying to run from Him. You have been trying to avoid God. There are some things that you know you need to deal with in your life, but you're trying to, to uh, 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 justify them in your life. Uh, you're, you're trying to debate the Lord on these things, and uh, you hear Him right now. Walking in the, not the cool of the day, but the warmth of June the 23rd, 2019. He's dealing with you right now. Where art thou? Three facts about God that will change your life. Father, we love you. Lord, I pray right now that you would speak to our hearts from your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As I stand to preach each week, there is one thing that I am certainly confident of concerning those that I minister to. Every single one of us in here this morning live in a stressful and confused age. Uh, we are confronted by the strange contrasts of life many times. Life rides along evenly. And I hope you're there this morning. Life, life sometimes, many times, it, it rides along smoothly. But there are times when life can fluctuate between extremes. There are times when your life will fluctuate between, between extreme joy and extreme sadness. There can be great confidence in your life and, and other days there's great insecurity. You don't know what you're going to do. You don't know what you believe in. Life moves from health to pain. It can move from mountaintops of spiritual experience where God uh, seems so very, very near. And I, know, I know most of you as children of God in here this morning, you've experienced those times when His presence was tangible. I mean, I, I mean, you knew He was very, very near. But you know what? Sometimes in life, we move to the valleys where He seems so far away. Life can move from triumph to disappointment. It can move from success to failure. 
Sometimes we skim along on the surface of joy while other times the deep calleth unto deep. Life is sometimes confusing. Sometimes it's very enlightening. We have great knowledge about many things, but we are ignorant about many more things. There are times when we are confident in our relationships. And other times we are deeply hurt by those that we love and by those that we respect a great deal. Friends and family support us and as we know, friends and family can let us down. We experience the emotions of love and hate. Many times we are content in this life, but we are also at times discontented. Our country can win battles on foreign soils, but at home we are losing the war against drugs. We're losing the war against crime in our nation and in our community. We can put a man on the moon, but we can't even cure cancer. We have problems in life, and some of those major problems that affect the health of millions of people that affect many in this congregation today the problem of stress the problem of anxiety the problem of depression the problem of loneliness and so we do we live in a stressful age a confused age we are confronted by those strange contrasts in life if we're not careful we'll begin to wonder who we are and if anybody cares is there anybody who has the power to do something for us? What about God? Where is God in the midst of all this confusion? Where is God in the midst of my stress and in the midst of my anxiety? Where is God in the middle of my loneliness? Does God have anything to offer us? Well, I believe He does this morning. You say, preacher, what is it that He can do for us? I want to show you this morning three facts about God that can change your life today and forever. Number one, I want you to write this down. I want you to write down that there is the constancy of His love. His love is constant. You can claim that promise. You can claim that fact, the constancy of His love. You see, my friend, every single person in here this morning under the sound of my voice, I can say with confidence that you can count on the unconditional, never-failing, all-time love of God. There is not one person in this world that God doesn't love. There's not one person that you can find in this world that you cannot go to them and tell them that God doesn't love them. I'm telling you, God loves the world. We're going to read it in a moment in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that what? He gave. You know what, there's some of you in here today, and I've talked to people in recent days, but there's some of you in here today, and very rarely in your life, have you been told that you were loved, even by family. There's some of you in here this morning and you're at such a point that you don't think anybody cares about you. You don't think anybody loves you. I want you to know today that God's love for you is constant. You can't leave here today saying no one loves you. I, I have just told you based on the Word of God that God loves you. This has been true since the words in Genesis 1 and chapter uh, uh, verse 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The first words in the Word of God. You know in the story of the beginning the Bible says God created all of creation. He capped that creation off with the creation of man. The only part of His creation that He created to love and to have fellowship with Him. Did you know this morning that man is the only creature with the ability to love God and respond to the love of God? Man is the only creature with the capacity to love God and respond to God. Throughout centuries, God has demonstrated His love for mankind. The Old Testament is the story of the deliverance of his people. He delivered them through the flood. He delivered them out of the hand of Pharaoh there in Egypt. He delivered them through the Babylonian exile. God, the, the Old Testament is a story of God's deliverance of his people. He sent the patriarchs, he sent the judges and the prophets to tell man of his love, to tell man how much God loved the world. And then the Bible says, the New Testament says, in the fullness of time, 
Jesus came. Jesus was God in the flesh. You know what that means? That means that Jesus was the very embodiment of the love of God. Jesus was the very embodiment of, of God's love. And now the same God that loved throughout history, I can tell you today that He loves you individually this morning. When life fluctuates to the low extreme, I want to remind you today that God loves you. When the moments of hurt and insecurity come, you need to be reminded that God loves you when nobody seems to care about you. Remember this morning, sir. Remember this morning, ma'am. Teenager, listen. God loves loves you when friends and family let you down listen the Bible says my Bible says in the book of Proverbs that there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother Jesus said about himself listen he said greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends you know what Jesus did for you he laid down his life for you there's no greater love that anybody has for you than the love of Almighty God. When you're disappointed, when you're frustrated, when you face tragedy, when you face death, when you face defeat, when you cry out from the depths and you've cried until your tears have dried up, remember that God loves you and you're not alone. On the walls of a mental institution, an unknown patient scrawled the following words, engraved them on this wall. Could we with ink the ocean fill? And were the skies of parchment made, were every stalk on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade, to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. Those words so touched the heart of F.H. Lehman. He had written a hymn called The Love of God. And when he read those words from an unknown patient in a mental institution, he made those words the last verse of his song. God had penetrated the depths of a disturbed mind and a disturbed heart. But listen this morning, above all, when you need a Savior, I want you to remember that Jesus said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. First fact, the constancy of God's love. The second fact I want you to see this morning that can change your life now and forever is this. I want you to notice the consistency of God's searching. It is absolutely astounding to me this morning. It is absolutely amazing to me this morning when I think about the fact that the God of the universe seeks me out personally. He looks for me personally. He's looking for you this morning. He's, he's longing to be with you. He wants to be in right relationship with you this morning. When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, they went and hid themselves. Why? Because they were guilt-ridden. Isn't it funny that we, we so often, we, uh, we know when we do something wrong as a child of God. Amen? I mean, we know, we know when we sin, the Holy Spirit of God convicts us, and in some way, in some way, we try to hide. Whether it's pushing it in the back of our mind, whether it's pushing it down in the depths of our heart, where we try not to think about it anymore. But listen, even God can get there. Look at it again in Genesis 3, and they heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Adam, where are you? God took the initiative declaring His presence to Adam and giving him an invitation to come into His presence. My friend, that is the way God operates. God takes the initiative in inviting us into His presence. God took the initiative in sending His Son into the world to reconcile men to God. The call was issued and God sought men out providing forgiveness for them. Listen this morning. God seeks you out today. In the depth of your sin, 
God finds you and sends the Holy Spirit to convict you of your sin and draw you unto Himself. He draws you to salvation. He draws you to be right with Him. In the depths of the problems of life, God seeks you out. He makes Himself available to you. When life is confusing, when life is depressing, when life is disappointing, when you're down in the valley far from the mountaintop, God seeks you. He wants you to be in His presence. He comes to you in the good times. To remind us all of our responsibility to share His kingdom and to serve in His kingdom and to support His kingdom. Listen, you may be in here this morning and and you've heard me say this before, but you may be in here this morning and you may think that this pastor, you may think this church, you may think your deacon, your friends have forgotten about you. Nobody has called to check on you. Listen, man is human. Man will fail you. Man errs. Amen? God is divine. God is perfect. His love is constant. His searching is consistent. And He never, ever leaves His child. You see, God's presence is always there. We don't have to cry out to God and try to find Him. He's seeking us. He's seeking us out. He's searching for us. We simply have to open up to receive what He has to offer us. Chad, I told the early service uh, what um, I told the Wednesday night crowd about what you taught us in Sunday school uh, the other Sunday. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were there in that fiery furnace. And, and when the, uh, the king came to look, there was four men in that fiery furnace. And it, it was the pre-incarnate Christ in there with them. And, and you know what? This never dawned on me. I had never seen this. I'd never thought about it. But did you know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were walking around in there? And isn't it amazing that they were not trying to find a way out? They're just walking around in just enjoying the presence of Jesus. I haven't always learned to do that when I'm going through a difficult time. To just enjoy the presence of Jesus. They weren't looking for a way out. They just wanted to be in His presence. They just wanted to be with Him. And then the last thing that I noticed, John 14 verses 1 through 3. I notice the certainty of God's care. The certainty of God's care. Listen, I I can say to everybody in here today, God will care for you. I know that God cares for me in salvation. We respond to the drawing of God and God takes care of the rest. And listen to me. When God takes care of us in salvation, that means that He takes care of us for all of eternity. If you're in here this morning and you've been saved, you are a child of God, you need not fear eternity. Now there's something about death that makes us uneasy. There's uh, some things about death that give us a little bit of anxiety. But if you're saved this morning, if you're a child of God, you are saved for time and eternity. He's taking care of your soul forever and forever. Can't lose it. Can't misplace it. Your salvation is secure in Him. Jesus had been talking to the disciples, telling them what was coming. Crucifixion is coming soon. He's going to die. The disciples, their hearts are downcast, downtrodden. They're sad. And in John 14, verse 1, Jesus says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. God will care for you in salvation. He takes care of your eternity. But also notice that God will care for you in your circumstances. He'll care for you. Hey, if you'll let Him, He'll care for you in time of trouble. When tragedy comes, when you you lose a loved one through death, when life gets hard, God will take care of you. 
Now listen, He may not change the circumstances you're in. He didn't change the circumstances of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. He may not change the circumstances you're in, but He will keep them from defeating and destroying you if you'll allow Him to. He'll give you the power to live within Him. He'll be with you every step of the way. God will care for you. He'll enter into your mind and into your life. And if you'll let Him, he'll, he'll give you knowledge. He'll give you power to live your life faithfully for Him. But the last thing that I see here is God will care for you in your uncertainty. God will care for you in your time of need. There are many of you that could come this morning and stand behind this pulpit and you could testify of God coming through for you exactly when you needed Him to. You worried about where the money was going to come from to buy your children's medicine. You worried about how you were going to pay the month or the rent that month because you had some emergencies come up. You didn't know how you were going to keep the power on, but, but God came through. God cares for us in our circumstances. Dr. R.G. Lee told the story of an event that happened in his first pastorate at Lima, North Carolina. He had received a bill from Furman University where he was a student, and the bill was for $84 that he had not been able to pay, and he was not going to be able to pay. The bill stated that it had to be paid in full the following Monday. On the weekends when he went to Lima to preach at the little church he was pastoring, he, he stayed in the home of a widow with her children and grandchildren. Well, on this particular Saturday evening, as he started up the stairs after dinner to his bedroom, the widow called out to him and said, Mr. Lee, Preacher Lee, I know you're trying to make your way through college and I just thought you might need a little help. And so she walked up those stairs and met him on that staircase and she dropped 20 $5 gold pieces in his hand. 100 bucks. Dr. Lee said that he spread those gold pieces on his bed. He got down on his knees and he thanked God for his providential sovereign care. He could now go pay that debt and go back to school the next semester. Listen, God will care for you in your circumstances. Two ladies testified after the service. God just grabbed a hold of them and they, they had to testify after the service in the early service of how God did something very similar for them. I had another person come to me after the service say, preacher, matter of fact, it was preacher Tommy Howard. He said, preacher, I want you to know something. He said, the very same thing happened to me. He said, I was going to a Bible college. I did not have the money to pay uh, one semester. He said, I wasn't going to go back because I didn't have the money. But he said, there was a lady that sat on his front pew or two pews, and he said, at every opportunity, that lady at every opportunity, she would tell me how worthless I was and how I was not going to amount to anything. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> and uh, it would, tell her, would tell him that all the time. He even showed me the pew where she sat. You're no good. You're not going to amount to anything. Well, he didn't have the money to go back to Bible school. And Brother Tommy said uh, one, one day he was in his yard and that lady drove up in his yard and looked at him and said, Howard, you need some money, don't you? He said, well, yeah, I do. She said, well, I'm so tired. God's kept me up all night for several nights. And she took out some money and threw it in his yard. She said, do with it what you need to do. <laughs> How about that? God cares. How do I know these promises of God are true? Well, here is how the songwriter answered that. He said, I've seen the lightning flashing. I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sin's breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of Jesus telling me still to fight on. Because He promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone. 
I don't mention this a great deal, but I, I have shared some of it with you. Two points in my life as a pastor where I really didn't know if I was going to be able to make it. I've only pastored Blue Ridge View. For those of you that are visiting today, never pastored any other church. First, first time came six months after I became pastor here. I, I had a bad case of stage fright, kept my nerves tore up. Um, I, still, I still get nervous before I preach. Still have those buzzards flying around, just like you soloists when you sing. I'm the same way. But a couple of things happened uh, during that first six-month stretch. And uh, one of those, I told the early service, Alton Howard was in the early service, and I said, one of those things that happened to me about two or three months in is we were with the older gentleman Sunday school class, and Brother Bear Patterson passed away at Quincy's. We were eating breakfast on a Saturday morning, and Brother Alton and I were giving him CPR outside on the sidewalk, and he died, his head died, he died with his head right here in my arms. And I didn't know how to handle that. I mean, I was 26, 27 years old, whatever, however old I was. Never pastored a church before. Talked to my father-in-law and said, hey, bro, you didn't tell me anything about this. <laughs> Nothing. Then had a, had a couple of other unfortunate things to happen and and I was really, really low. You can ask Stacy. Anxiety, major, major panic attacks, deep depression. And I was ready to leave the ministry. I was ready to go do something else. And I specifically, I specifically asked the Lord one day, one afternoon, for some reason I want to say it was a Wednesday, I don't know that for sure, but it very well could have been because... I would, get, I would get very anxious before I, I were to preach. I'd get very depressed. And, and so I just remember, I just remember sitting on my couch in, at uh, Brockman Drive, Sadie, and, and I was sitting there on the couch, and I was praying. And I, I, I said, Lord, I, I need a word from you. I, I need to know that I am where I need to be and that uh, this is what you have for me. And, and, and uh, you know, I... I why do we do that when we have His Word? We, we've got the Word of God. Now, I'll tell you why we do that sometimes. Because our faith gets weak. Amen? But, but every answer that, that we need is, is right here. He's always, already promised this stuff. But I said, God, short of you sitting on this couch beside me and whispering in my ear, short of that happening, which we know that's not going to happen, I, I said, I just need a tangible evidence that this is it. Went to the mailbox. That evening, got the mail out. There was a letter that I keep in one of my other Bibles. I've told some of you this before. There's a letter I keep in one of my other Bibles. There was a letter in there from Shelby Howard. God just delivered mail that day. He stopped at my mailbox, delivered mail. And basically that letter said, Preacher, we love you. It's been some of the greatest six months of the ministry at Blue Ridge View Baptist Church. We love you. All the deacons care about you. She wrote all the deacons' names around that letter, Brother Sammy. Every, every single deacon. And she, uh, she said, we love you. We support you. We can't wait to see what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you right now, I can't explain it. I can't, did, it did, your, did your depression go away overnight? Did your panic go away overnight? No, but I, I knew God had spoken to me. And then, then you guys know... Three and a half, four years ago, went into a dark clinical depression. You guys gave me a month off, really, really a month and a half off, because I just couldn't make it. There were times I would sit on that front pew and I would look at my wife before I got up to make announcements or to, to welcome everybody. I'd be on that front pew right there and Stacy would be in the choir with tears in her eyes and I would say, I'm resigning. I'd mouth that to her. And she'd shake her head. No. Didn't know if I was going to make it through. But because of this dear church, God being with me in my circumstances through you, the prayers of my family as I would see my wife and my daughter and my son holding hands in the living room 
weeping and crying and praying for me while I was in a corner balled up in the kitchen crying. Why were you crying? I have no idea. I don't know. Some of you know what I'm talking about. But through your prayers, my family's prayers, of course, going to the doctor, getting major help, God came through. God cared for me in my circumstances. And listen this morning. God wants to do the same for you. These three facts you can claim. That's what God has to offer us in the midst of a crazy, strange, confusing world. He will love you. He will seek you out. And He will care for you. Heads are bowed, eyes.